Okay, hi guys. Uh, what we're going to look at today is how to produce a logo from your initial uh, or your initials, your name even. So one of the things that you need to do first, I'd, I'd certainly recommend that piece of paper and a pencil and you literally start to kind of draft out different kind of letter formations and shapes and things that, that you could use. Um, it works really well with like a, a brush pen for something like this. Um, certainly what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and produce something that looks kind of hand-drawn um, like we saw at the start of the lesson with the different letter shapes that some companies use. We're going to try and produce something that's a bit more kind of natural and hand-drawn and less kind of technical and kind of straight. Um, just feel it, it makes it look a little bit more welcoming than, than, something, than something like that for instance. Okay, so I'd certainly on, on a page have a play with the letters trying to produce something that's relatively kind of fluid. Maybe you could put your letters in different parts, join them up. Um, maybe, depending on what it is, you can play around with the different formations and things of them. Okay. What we're going to look at now then, after you've done that and we've played around with that a little bit, is we're going to get ourselves either a marker pen or a brush pen. Uh, and we've got two here. In fact, one that's slightly run out and one that's relatively new. I'm going to show you the different techniques um, from doing this. So we're using these because they're these kind of chisel tip markers um, and it gives us a kind of a nice brush effect. So what I'm going to do first of all is fairly big on our page, I'm going to produce some kind of shape using our, our pen. Okay, so pretty easy and simple like that. You can choose another one. And this time I'm going to use another pen which is going to give me a slightly different effect because this one hasn't hasn't run out, or well, certainly not as much, and I'm going to form that there like so. All right, not the best in the world. I think you need to maybe a little bit more playing around with it, but you get the idea. Okay, so I've got two different shapes like that, and the next stage is we're going to go over to the iPad. Okay, so now we've done those two bits. I'm going to get the iPad in, and uh, we asked you for homework to download two programs, one called Adobe Capture and another one called Adobe Draw and both of these work on the same kind of idea and principles as Adobe Illustrator and it's going to work in vectors um, even though later on we're going to turn it into a bitmap for various different things that we're going to do um, they're quite nice to to help us with with some of the designs so the first time you load it up you'll probably have to sign up for an account um, completely free account for the Adobe Cloud so it saves all your work on a cloud I've already logged in and, and got into my account here and the nice thing is they'll link between the two as you'll see in a moment. So on here for instance I've got some colour settings saved uh, for various different things that I'm doing so you can save your own kinds of colours, you can save your own brush types, I can show you how to do that later or you can play around with that and the same with the one that's called looks. We're going to be working in the one that says shapes and you'll see it's got a button at the bottom, uh, plus button and it will capture and as you can see here Okay, it will start to capture certain images. So you can see it's starting to capture certain parts of my fingers, for instance. We're going to bring in our first kind of picture, if I can get it into screen. Okay, like so. And as you can see, the green parts on here are the bits that it's going to capture. It's not captured everything, so I've got a button here that I can slide, which is going to collect more of the image that I want. Okay, so if I zoom it down like so, make sure it's all in shot. And because the pen is slightly run out, you can see it doesn't pick up all the parts that I, I would necessarily want. But that's probably a, a, quite a nice effect which I'm going to play with. So I've got that. I'm going to hit the capture button. And it captures it like so. And as you can see, it's not got all of the parts of the shape, which I think is quite a nice effect. Um, I'm going to hit next on there and it's going to change it into a smooth shape. It's going to redraw it for us with some nice smooth lines. When you're happy with that, you simply hit next and it brings it into your library where you can rename it. So I'm going to rename it initials. And then hit save shape at the bottom. Okay, now that's going to take it to my library. If I show you the other one just for uh, to compare it to, same sort of thing, hit the plus button, 
it's going to bring up a live preview. And what I'm going to do on purpose, I'm going to make some little marks on my page um, to show you another kind of nice feature of this. I'll move it up a little bit. I can slide this to capture all of my letter. Okay, so it's nice and solid this time, and hit capture. Now on this one, it's picked up the top of my paper, which I don't want, and also that squiggle that was on my paper that I don't want. So with this button that's selected that says remove from shape, I can rub my finger over it, rub my finger over this, it turns gray, you hit next, and it'll erase that from the image. It'll color it in again, so it's nice and smooth, it's quite a nice effect, quite like that, and hit next. Okay. Okay, so we've got both of our images in, uh, in there. And what we're going to do, we're going to come out of that and then go into Adobe Draw. What Adobe Draw, or Adobe Illustrator Draw does, is, as the name suggests, it's very much like Adobe Illustrator. And what you can do on here is, again, um, it, it links to it. So I can start up a new document, and in this document, I've got a range of different brushes down the side and with my normal brush. I could just do a kind of a handwritten one in here, which is pretty cool. Okay, you get nice different effects and things in here. You can click in the brushes. You can change the size of the brush that you want. Okay, so you can come up with some really nice effects. Uh, obviously, you can change the color. If you remember before, I had different colors saved in my library, and they show up here. Okay, and again, you can change the different uh, settings that you've got, the different brush types, and so on and so forth, like so. Okay, to undo, two fingers, swipe to the side, and you can undo your different parts that you don't want. It's pretty cool. However, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look here up at the top, and we're going to use one of the shape tools. And the shape tools are pretty smart. So, for instance, if we have a French curve, what it allows us to do is we can move it around, we can spin it around, we can make it bigger, and then using one of our brushes that we've got, you can use that to draw with. Okay, move it down, we can do another shape, and so on. So I might want a slightly smaller brush, okay, make it slightly smaller, and again, you can kind of draw there, I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool shape, um, but instead of using that tool, we're going to go to my library, and you'll see I've got my two different drawings that we had here. So I'm going to bring in my initials. Again, I'm going to make it pretty big. You can spin it around, position it where you want. Uh, you can change the colour. So I'm going to go for uh, a bright purple colour. And to finish, you double click and it drops it down like so. What I could do is I could maybe then drag it out ever so slightly, change the colour. I'm going to go to use a dark colour, click. And you can come up with some kind of quite cool effects and things like so. What I want to do though, in fact, is I'm going to put in a new layer. So I'm now going to do it on this drawing layer here. I'm now going to double click. If I go back into my layers here, what I can then do is I can hold my layer down, flick it behind, and as you can see then, it goes behind that layer, acting like a shadow, which is pretty cool. It also allows you then to go onto layers, click into here, Let's draw a layer uh, at the bottom. And on this draw layer here, I'm going to go onto shapes again. I'm going to go onto the app shapes, choose something like an ellipse, open it up, spin it around, just make it relatively big, like so. And whatever, choose that. Double click. It'll do just the line for you. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. But if you hold it down, he says, there you go. Hold it down, and it'll fill it in. Okay, have a play. Okay, so now you've done that, what we're going to have a look at is a few kind of extra, extra things that you could uh, that you could do, especially for those of you that are wanting the slightly higher grades and things on this. So there's loads that you can do with layers. So we can put in a, another layer uh, over here. I've gone for a slightly darker color and a slightly lighter opacity. So what that will allow me to do is I can draw on here, don't like that, try again, I can draw on here some kind of shadow parts just to try and make it pop a little bit more off the page. Uh, what I've got there, if I go into different brushes, there's an eraser brush, zoom in, 
and then just simply with your finger just brush over the bits that you don't want remembering that if you do make a mistake it's pretty simple and easy to undo to move it by the way if you pinch and then two fingers it allows you to move your image so spin it around there just neaten it up obviously there's a bit down there I need to neaten up as well do it like so need to do all of this part so it does take a little while but usually the effects are, are pretty cool so I'll leave that obviously I need to neaten that up but you can see I'm starting to put shadows and things on there which can look pretty cool when you've done all of that there's an upload button you can send it to Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop Creative Cloud which are another cloud-based service and you can work on it directly in Illustrator or Photoshop um, it does cost though I think you get a free a free trial but what we're going to do is we're going to share it we're going to send it via email send it to yourself okay right what we're going to do now now you've got your logo we need to keep it relatively simple and relatively small it's just going to be used as like an icon on your work uh, so it doesn't need to be over complicated like you saw on the other logos there's loads that you can do with it, basically experiment I think is the best thing. You can have up to 10 different layers on here. Um, you can also add in a photo layer where you can import a picture and just kind of trace over the top of it to, to help you draw if you're not that great kind of freehand. So we're going to have a, another layer in here. And I've chosen a brush already uh, with a slightly darker colour purple than what I've got and I've lowered the opacity ever so slightly. Um, I'm going to have a go at kind of doing some shadows. So on here, not happy with that, on here I can just start to put in some kind of dark parts just to try and make my, my work pop a little bit. So as you can see I've gone over the area in certain parts and what I can do now is the last brush is an eraser brush. Uh, you've not got a huge amount of options on this. You can basically change the, the size of the, of the brush. That's pretty much it. Uh, to move it around the page, you pinch and then you can drag with two fingers. And then using the eraser, you can just start to trim off the parts that you don't want. Remembering that if you do happen to make a mistake, just two finger swipe and it can get rid of it. So I just take off a few little parts here so you can see how it kind of works. like so around the outside you can see I've gone over a little bit there it's two fingers and it goes back it's pretty simple and I'll finish this last little bit at the top and basically I, th I think the best thing to do is to kind of experiment with it and see what you can come up with so obviously I've not done the other side but you can see it's starting to kind of lift off the page a little bit just looks a little bit more interesting when you're happy with it we're going to go to uh, basically publish it um, you can put it into Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud or Illustrator Creative Cloud. It is a paid for service though. Um, not necessarily sure it's worth it for this time round. I think you get a free trial. We're going to go to share and we're just going to share it via email. Okay, Put it into there. It will drop it in and then you can just email it to yourself to use in uh, Illustrator later on. Either when we've done our infographics or some of our design work. Okay, have a play.